All right, we are in the finals, and we're on the draw, and we're going to keep. Good looking hand. We've got three creatures. We have the mana to play them, and we have a nice combat trick, so pretty optimal hand. So we get to go Guardian into Conduit into maybe Flip. Ooh. Hmm. What to do? What to do? Would I prefer the Conduit first or the Brazen Wolves? If I play the Conduit, I can flip it on turn four, which is pretty good. Ooh, Soul Swallower. All right. Um, so the question is, do I think my opponent's going to block here? Probably not if I attack. I think I'm going to attack. I'll, the problem is I have to two for one myself if my opponent does block, but I don't think they're going to block. They could. They could. All right. As expected, no block, which we didn't want them to do. But still, we're in a, we're an aggro deck, so we attack. That is what we do. So I can play the Brazen Wolves. I think we have to because they can actually attack into the Soul Swallower. We don't have to, but it's what I'm going to do. All right, take our medicine. Opponent's not on their second color. That's good news. So if they have aim high, we're just going to attack first and not worry about it. Not worried about it. All right. No discard. All right, so we'll bust out the old borrowed hostility. And do we want to keep our guardian alive or do we want to get in for seven points of damage? You know, we could let our guardian die and follow up with a conduit. I'm just thinking, how much value is our 2-2 going to give us? I feel like not that much. I mean, either way, I'm playing Borrowed Hostility. But the problem, the, the question is, do I want to play the Conduit? I think I do, because next turn I can flip it and attack. All right. So we're going to sacrifice. We're, we're Basically, we're two for wanting ourselves to speed up this Conduit of uh, Storm's process here. Which I think is correct. Because being able to flip it next turn is pretty valuable for us, I think. Like I said, I just I don't know how much value a Guardian's going to bring us this game either. Especially if he's got the Soul Swallower. Like, the difference between attacking for five on our next turn and waiting two turns before being able to attack for five is pretty vast. Still swinging for the fences with his, with their Soul Swallower, so I'm trying to see what's going on. Ingenious Scab, okay. It's two mana up. Hmm. Ooh. Well, hmm, this is interesting. So I flip my conduit now. I mean, I could play Faith Unbroken plus Gossip Monger, which isn't bad. I wish it was a white mana that conduit added. 
I mean, technically, I could... No, getting that extra damage seems so important. Let's just swing. I mean, another thing I can do is just play the killer in the gas miner. So, basically, uh, my opponent takes three less damage, but I get two more creatures on board. It's pretty good. It's the difference between my, my opponent going to... I mean, I guess these creatures aren't fantastic on this board, though. Hmm. Getting in for nine is pretty slick, though. All right, let's get in for nine. I decided. I've decided. I mean, our conduit is straight up lethal at this point. And Face Unbroken is going to have a bit of a problem in a matchup like this. We did pass and unsubstantiate. And I think it's safe-ish safe, safe -ish to assume. There's some other little shenanigans in there, too. There could definitely be some more bounce effects. Just the wind. Drag under. So Faith Unbroken is a bit of a liability. Maybe he'll give us a token to eat. Nom, nom, nom. That would be good. Hmm. That's something. So, both attacking and tapping out? What could it be? Lashweed Lurker. Well, I think our opponent is just dead then, so... We're happy to see the greed. Happy to see greed. Our opponent would not have died had they simply left back ingenious scab or something but they did not all right well we got round or game one rather so blue green emerge good looking deck definitely good looking deck thankfully our deck is rocking and rolling right now so let's keep that trend going um it's got Delirium in the Soul Swallower, but it doesn't look like it's dedicated Delirium. It still could be. Just didn't see the tools for it. Yeah, all of my opponent's cards look good. So it doesn't seem like it's going to be an easy matchup by any stretch, but I don't think we need to make any swaps. It's nice that Machinations lets you attack into anything, but I just think we're basically we're doing better things. All right, let's try her out again here. All right, keeping this. I only have one creature. And it's a creature that wants other creatures, but this is definitely a keep. There you have it. All we needed. So I'm pretty confident we're willing to trade a Strength of Arms for a lot of things. Yeah, I mean, I'll trade it for a Field Creeper. I'm not... Uh, yeah, I guess it's not a magnificent trade for us, admittedly, but I think I'd still rather keep the Gossip Monger.
Spiteful motives on a gossip monger is pretty slick. Sanctifier. Well, hmm. So I can threaten the gossip monger on the captive. It's probably worth it. My opponent blocks will. All right. So opponent took the bait. Or didn't take the bait, rather. Wait, took the bait? In this circumstance, since I'm bluffing, am I giving my opponent bait? <laughs> well, you kind of know what I'm getting at. You kind of get it. You a little bit get it. All right, Faith Unbroken is sweet. So we can play Mad Prophet. Uh, or I can play Sanctifier. And then flip my Gossip Monger. My opponent's missing land drops, too. I probably should have mentioned that. For that reason, I could just play Faith Unbroken and eat that captive. It's pretty good, and then swing. My opponent has Prey Upon, though, because of the prowess. They can trade and get it back, which is a bit of a problem. Hmm. I mean, I want to Faith Unbroken the captive because my opponent's got five spells in hand. If they draw lands... I mean, keeping them off the ramp is pretty good here. And if I guess if they... Well, the problem is if they have Rabbit Bite, it's pretty bad for us. All right. I think that we're just going to play the... Hmm. I want to flip my Gossip Monger for sure. So do I want the Sanctifier or the Mad Pro? I guess we play the Sanctifier and pass. So we're going to flip our Gossip Monger. And I think we're just playing Faith Unbroken next turn. Possibly. No attacks. Hmm. Well, open mana is a bit of a concern. But, all right, I guess we're just going to start smashing with a Gossip Monger. I'm totally willing to trade it at this point, too, if I have to. Or an incited rabble, rather. All right, fifth lands, not bad, actually. So let's swing with our rabble only. Oh, Chilling Grasp, okay. All right, no problem. So we can do the Faith Unbroken now, and then our opponent can't. All right, I think we do it now. So let's do it on the Rabble. We're just going to eat our opponent's captive here. So we're leaving with the Flyer, but we're taking away one of their resources. Could have done Mad Prophet instead, but now that they've drawn the land, basically, it, I feel like it slows them up pretty good. If they have the bounce spell, eh, it's a bit of an annoyance, but it's not that bad. Yeah. Like, they don't even really two-for-one us. They still won for one us. They trade an unsubstantiate for a faith unbroken. Granted, it's a better trade for them, but it's not that great. My question is, why did they leave back the Nibblis of Dusk? If they were going to Chilling Grasp. Does that make sense? I don't think so. All right, we're going to play the Mad Prophet. We're going to ditch this mountain. And we'll play the Gossip Monger. Could have just attacked with Mad Prophet, but maybe I should have. Maybe. Mad Prophet kind of feeds our Sanctifier of Souls, too, which is nice.
All right. Let's see here. So, Brazen Wolves versus Dawn Griff. Um, we can still play the Brazen Wolves. We're not in a big rush to play this. This Dawn Griff. Do I want to use the Mad Prophet? I, I kind of like all the cards in my hand. Let's just play the Brazen Wolves and pass. More creatures I have, the better with this Borrowed Grace anyway. Now our opponent can't attack with Fogwalker without losing it to the Gossip Monger either, which is kind of nice. No play. All right. So we're not going to use Mad Prophet. Like I said, I like all the cards in our hand. All right. There's an outcast. So we can swing with everything here. We know our opponent's got Pack Guardian in there somewhere, but I can play Borrowed Grace, so I don't care. And our opponent pretty much for sure doesn't have a, a land to discard. All right. No problem there. Not doing any clever tricks because our opponent's got a bunch of open mana. Mutation on the rabble. Okay. Uh, all right. Sure. So we get him for six. All right. Let's play the outcast and pass. Obviously, I didn't pre-combat that because I wanted to leave up Borrowed Grace in case our opponent had some weird shenanigans. But now we have five creatures for Borrowed Grace, which is a lot of extra damage. Catalog. All right, well, this could be real good for us. This could be our opportunity to win here. Like, if I... Let's see. Borrowed Grace, six trample... Plus this. Yeah, this might just be the attack we need to get there. We'll see. Let's see what opponent does with if they get the land drop here because they have the captive too. No land drop. All right. Opponent is in... It's pretty serious trouble then. Alright. Well, we are swinging for the fences. I guess I can go Dawn Griff plus Borrowed Grace. But then I can't do the, the full bar. Well, how's my opponent going to block? So Rabble's not going to get blocked. Opponent can't play a... Well, they could play Confront, I guess. Is the extra damage the difference between life or death? Because six damage trample, but I can also inflate. No, let's just do Borrowed Grace plus inflate. That seems so much better. All right. Swinging for El Fencerinos here. And we'll see how they block and figure out damage from there. Mad Prophet. That guy. Alright. So, let's say that I play Borrowed Grace. What happens? 
These both get buffed. That's 12 damage. 13, 14, 15. Yeah, that is lethal. So we go like this. And begin the inflation plan. Vilden Pack Outcast is so good. What a good limited card is this common is. Opponent says GG's. All right. We got there. So next draft will be an 8-4. Thanks so much for tuning in. I apologize for the sounds in the background. That was my landlord fixing stuff up, drilling a little bit, doing a little bit of drilling. So I apologize for that. But uh, next draft will be an 8-4. We'll see you guys then. Thank you. See you later.